Jawhead Rex is a 1986 movie based off the short story by Clive Barker. Apparently, Barker was not happy with the film, and it inspired him to have more involvement with his future projects like Hellraiser. For me, I saw this film when I was a kid on late night public access TV. I don't remember much about it, so let's dive right in. The first thing we see are some farmers who found some sort of stone monolith in their field. They're trying to remove it, but it won't budge. Out of nowhere, the sky grows dark, and lightning strikes the stone, heating it up red hot. At the same time, an altar in a church heats up unexpectedly. The monolith falls over and frees Rawhead Rex. What? What's the problem? Mom says it's gonna rain. Why don't you stop taking down photographs? Next, we are introduced to the main character of the film, an American named Howard Hollenbeck. I like him. He seems down to earth and relatable. He's a writer who has come to Ireland to study churches, and specifically the ancient sites that the churches were built on. Tell about 10 minutes, okay? She's mad with you. Oh, all right, all right. Just tell her five. Look, I have to see somebody in the church about this site, okay? Then can we go home? I'm bored. Bored? Robbie, how can you be bored? This is the land of your forefathers, remember? Yeah, and they left. Tell her five minutes. Inside the church, we get to see some very cool looking stained glass windows. One with a depiction of Rawhead Rex, complete with glowing red eyes. A priest who goes by Declan O'Brien, which is about the most Irish name I've ever heard, touches the altar, which seems to change him, making him a crazed follower of Rawhead. Finally, we get to see the demon's first of many kills, and the scene builds tension quite well. You know Rawhead is in the barn, but they keep cutting back to a lady chopping up meat. It makes me really nervous, like she's going to cut one of her fingers off. Who's there?
Rawhead attacks and kills the man, then comes after his wife. She locks the door, like that'll do anything, and hides from Rawhead. He catches up with her pretty quickly, and he goes for the kill, but he sees that she's pregnant and spares her. So Rawhead is either a really nice guy and doesn't want to kill pregnant women, or for some reason he fears her. Hmm, I wonder which one it is. Next, we see a campground where two brothers are fighting. The older one just wants to make out with his girlfriend while the younger one is being an annoying twerp. You're just being selfish. You're a selfish little brat. Sorry for this. I'm gonna get you back, dickhead. You and two's army. You little pig. Just you wait. It's not very warm. You're a little bastard. Mm -hmm. Hey! No, you Give don't. Give me that. Get lost. Ah. The older brother locks his sibling in the trailer and goes into the woods for some sexy time. Eventually, the boy gets out and he sees his broken toy. Assuming it was his brother, he chases after him into the woods. He sees Rawhead eating his first victim. Understandably freaked out by this, the boy runs back to the campground, but he is unable to speak. The older brother and his girlfriend find the body and run right into Rawhead, who kills the brother. Howard can't sleep, so he goes out for a walk and catches his first glimpse of Rawhead Rex. Uh, this is Mr. Um, Mr. Um, Hollenbeck. Mm. Howard Hollenbeck, Inspector Gissing. He goes back into town to report his sighting to the police who obviously don't believe him. Maybe I saw something. Oh? But I'm not exactly sure what. We're looking for more than one perpetrator, Mr. Uh, Hallenbeck. What I saw wasn't human. I beg your pardon? The kid wouldn't say a word. Not a word. Later, the little boy from the campground draws exactly what Howard described. So, the police decide that maybe they should investigate. God Almighty. 
Maybe the Yank was right. Maybe there is something out there. Howard decides he's done with his research, and it's probably best to get his family away from this small town. But of course, early on in their trip, his daughter has to go pee. I gotta pee. They stop on the side of the road, and she goes behind a bush. She sees something, screams, and both of her parents go running, leaving the brother alone in the car. It turns out the girl was just afraid of some dead rabbit or something, but it was plenty of time for Rawhead to attack the boy. <laughs> Howard chases after him, but it's too late. I think it belongs here. I think this is its home from way back. Then we've got it, haven't we? If this is its territory, it'll come back sooner or later. All we have to do is wait. Howard goes back to the police station, determined to hunt the creature himself if the police won't do anything about it. Mr. Hallenbeck, we understand how you feel. You have no idea how I feel! Knowing that this is not just some ordinary person, Howard goes back to the church for clues. I've just heard about your son. My condolences. The main priest, Reverend Coote, explains that the church was rebuilt in the 1860s, and the stained glass had to be put back together like a jigsaw puzzle. Just, just when were the windows put in? Well, they were made and remade several times. The church was badly damaged in the 1860s. A lot of the glass was lost or replaced. It's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. I knew it. That's it. It just didn't fit. Howard then puts the pieces of the puzzle back together and thinks he might have started to find the key to defeating this creature. Look, look, look. This image doesn't fit there. But look at this. There's one hand, and there's the other one. So? I think this guy in the picture, I think he beat the creature once before. Back at the campground, Rawhead flips a camper over. He obviously doesn't care if anyone sees him at this point, and we find out what kind of unstoppable beast he really is. attacks the inspector, and the deputy actually leaves him and just drives away. He doesn't get too far though. Rawhead then sees the potential in the inspector, and possesses him. Uh, Mr. Hallenbeck, 
Gissing here yet? He's very busy at the moment. Listen, it's very important that I talk to him. Mr. Hallenbeck, you have already made your feelings perfectly clear. The inspector will see you as soon as he can. Now, I have to pause for a moment. I will usually edit out any bad language in a movie because I feel it doesn't add anything. But for this movie, I have to make an exception. Oh, in the meantime, can I get you a cup of tea? Why don't you go fuck yourself? Hmm. I'll pass that suggestion along. Oh, you do that. There is a really, really weird scene that people have dubbed the baptism scene. Basically, Rawhead takes a piss on the possessed priest. <laughs> Reverend Coot sees this, and he's chased by Rawhead. And here, we get a little bit of his backstory. There has been a lot of religious references in this movie, with the church and Howard's book on the history of church sites, so now it's revealed that Rawhead is actually a pagan god that was here before Christ. And we finally get to hear his name. He wants you, you know. Wants to baptize you. You're out of your mind. No! I simply saw the light. Declan, you are one of God's teachers. God! <laughs> he is God! <laughs> the parish records. He was here before Christ, before civilization. He was king here. Rawhead. That's what they called him. Rawhead! This is holy ground. God's ground. Oh, Jesus. What was that? Hey. Keep them back! Out of the line of fire! Come on back! Rawhead gets Reverend Coot and carries him out for all to see. He is still alive, so the police won't shoot. Meanwhile, the possessed inspector lights everyone on fire. This scene is crazy. Everyone's running around on fire while Rawhead just watches. For you! Get some help. He's bleeding to death. Jesus, dear God. Stay in the church. What's he saying? Shut up. The altar. Afraid. Something. In the altar. In the Reverend's last dying breath, he reveals that there's something in the altar. Howard manages to fight through the pain of the altar and opens it up to reveal an all-powerful weapon that will defeat Rawhead. It's a stone. In all seriousness though, the stone is of a pregnant woman, which explains why he was afraid of the pregnant lady from the beginning. There! 
Howard holds the stone up above his head, just like in the stained glass window. However, it's not working. Okay, do it. Come on. Howard's wife comes to save him, and during his fight with Rawhead, she holds the stone up, which activates it. So, it has to be a woman to activate the stone. And with this, Rawhead is defeated. Of course, this is an 80s horror movie, so it's not the end of Rawhead. One last thing I noticed is, at the end of the credits, it says that the characters in the film are fictitious. Oh, good, thanks. I thought Rawhead Rex was real. So, some final thoughts on this film after re-watching it. And I'd say it's pretty good. It would be just a normal run-of-the-mill 80s horror film. But Howard really carries the show. I like Rawhead too. Some criticize the look of the monster, but I think it's alright. You see him a lot. It's not just in low lighting either, you see him during the day. Because I watched this when I was a kid, my dad would always tease me that Rawhead would get me, so I do see him in my nightmares. I guess I'm a little nostalgic, but I think it deserves a little bit more credit. It's no masterpiece, but it should have more than the small cult following it currently has. I give it 3 out of 4 Graveyard Baptisms. It doesn't care about you! When it's finished with you, what will it do with you? I hope...